Today, it's about where you belong. It's about where you belong in your life, where you belong vibing with people, and you better be clear about what you want today because you're gonna get it. Uh, today is a day where you can make a decision to change anything in your life without any consequences. It's your get out of free jail card, get out of jail free card today. So make sure today you're setting your intention. I want you in your comments right here to tell me what your intention is for the rest of your life. What do you want here? What do you want this year? My intention is to do this. Put it in the comments here, share. Hi from Seattle, hi, hi. Awesome. How to know hidden traumas. <laughs> the 28 day reset and journaling. You'll get to those hidden ones. <clears throat> Uh, can you please share your wisdom on panic attacks and anxiety? Uh, yeah, actually, if you're not in the 28 day reset, um, go into the go into the app and and ask. You're gonna have all kinds of people that have gone through panic attacks. I can tell you right now, panic attacks and anxiety are caused by typically chronic dehydration, torquing in the body. The panic attack usually comes when there's a when there's a threat to the lung. So it's like a torquing in the body. You'll usually have something really tight up in the trap and you have something painful in there. That's usually what the panic attack comes from. The anxiety is a buildup of stress over time. 28 day reset protocol will get rid of it. But right now, uh, SG, I guess that's Sagittarius X232, go to the link in the bio, or so go to our website and do the upper reset. Go through the entire upper reset, come back here, your panic attack and your anxiety should be gone. <clears throat> Hello from sunny Philadelphia. You're taking care of your body, so I want you to put your intent, health and wealth. Okay, health and wealth is broad, and I appreciate that. I want you to put your intent. You, how are you gonna get health and wealth? Are you going to learn? Um, is it, are you taking care of your health better? Are you gonna take care of myself? <clears throat> yes, Karari, Karari, Karari. Karari malformation, we have lots of people who have, uh, who have actually resolved theirs. Um, and I had somebody up here a couple months ago on the live who had absolutely easy. Look at the shape of the heads of everybody changing when they do this. That's the pressure changing. Go do the upper reset, get your chemicals out of your diet, <clears throat> get, the, uh, get your GI tract cleaned, and do the upper reset on a daily basis. One, I'm gonna change the world one sticker at a time. <laughs> I don't wanna feel pain anymore. <clears throat> I appreciate that, but if you don't wanna feel pain anymore, you're likely going to feel it. Tell me what, you, and this is for Victoria, Becca, tell me what you wanna do. Like, I have a story of a little girl that I worked with named Ray. She was on the spectrum and couldn't walk in crutches and her parents just wanted her to be healed. And I asked her, and it, nothing was working. I said, what do you want to do, Ray? I want to play tag. So tell me what you want to do when you're out of pain, and that's how you get out of pain. If you want to get out of pain, you're always focused on the pain. <clears throat> Neck and shoulder pain, Vesna M333. Immediately go to our, our website, do the upper reset, and come back. You'll be done in 40 minutes, and you will be out of pain, at least very close to it, and let us know what happened. Be happy and healthy. I love that. Too vague. Gotta be more, more specific, guys, today. Today's a day where you're getting a sense of what you want in your life. Like, and happy and healthy, it's, I, look, at, at the end of it, you can say that, but for most people, that's unattainable right now. Because <clears throat> they have all this stuff going on in their life. Like, if, you're waking up, you have to also, you have to set a container for what you want and it will be happy and healthy. And then I want to do more of this. Like what are some of the ways you're gonna do it? One of the ways to be happy is I wanna follow my heart. I wanna, I wanna do more art. I wanna, I wanna travel, I wanna see these sites. I wanna, I wanna start working with kids. Those are all ways to do it. Good morning from Taos. Help people learn they can heal themselves. There you go. So I want to help people learn how to heal themselves. That's more practical. Do you know anything? How to cure? Ovarian cyst? Absolutely. Forget about it. Ovarian cyst, pretty easy. Put a, uh, you can DM us. But 28-day reset, 
Um, here, I'll do it right now. <clears throat> People, you wanna grab this one, please? The highest level of success with people that have cured or are moving past ovarian cysts are a couple things. Number one is to do the lower reset and the barefoot sprinter routine, number two. Uh, number two, if you can get somebody to do partner maneuvers, you do the partner belly button uh, trauma release and the partner ileocecal valve release and the partner hip release and any of the other partner maneuvers, that's to get the flow going. For the cysts themselves, um, three times a day, I would be doing the psoas release, and then I would do the same thing as the psoas release over top of the bladder. And that's gonna help start to break up the tissue. Cysts are when the tissue, the fascial tissue layers, when you get fluid blockages. A couple things that you can do is you get your, you means that you have hydration issues, so diatomaceous earth, Irish sea moss, Get the Power Kirk 30, which will extremely help because it'll help you separate the inflammation in those layers of fascia around the ovaries and so that it can move better and that you can move better. And then on top of that, um, what you can do is castor oil packing. And I would use a little bit of frankincense, but you don't need to. And you can Google that, castor oil packing, and I would put it right over top of the ovaries. And I would leave it on there with heat one hour a day. And usually somewhere in the area of two to four weeks, the ovarian cysts tend to burst from all the people that have reported. And we have thousands and thousands who have done this. My home-based business to flourish. Thanks, Kelly. What is your home-based business out of curiosity? Raynard's disease. Yes, absolutely. Raynard's all autoimmune diseases. Go download our autoimmune protocol. Um, go to our, our website and download our autoimmune protocol. And uh, for Raynard's disease, the daily movements is lower reset, barefoot sprinter routine number two. But I highly suggest that you start off with a 28 day reset and get through that. You, the Raynard's disease is coming from here. You gotta get the small intestine moving, like all autoimmunes. And you can look at Raynard's um, rheumatoid arthritis, um, Hashimoto's, Graves' disease. You'll see many people that have reversed their diagnoses. And you can go to our website, or sorry, our YouTube, and look at, uh, at I Cured My Autoimmune Disease with Claire. And we have people that have presented medical evidence. So guys, take our autoimmune protocol, follow it. I'm going to tell you this, you cannot cure an autoimmune disease without taking chemicals out of your diet. Take chemicals out of your diet, um, get the inflammation down, move the tissue, get your body hydrated through mineralization. Okay, my intention is to lose weight. Great intention. What do you wanna do? If your intention is to lose weight, you're going to struggle with losing weight. If you want to wear a different dress, or a different pair of pants, if you want to be able to run up a hill, if you want to uh, be able to climb something, you're going to be able to accomplish that if losing weight is a part of that journey. If your goal is to lose weight, your chances are, even if you lose it, you're just gonna find it again and keep losing it and finding it and keep losing it or not lose it at all. You have to have a goal that encompasses what you want in your body. <clears throat> Hi from Montreal. Sudden urge to urinate, overactive bladder. Sudden urge, sudden urge to urinate with an overactive bladder, slightly different between male and female, but generally here's what's, what I have found, is that there's chronic dehydration of the fascial tissue which causes constriction around the pelvic floor and the pelvic region. So when the fascia is dehydrated, it tightens up here and restricts movement. So that puts more pressure on the bladder and it even makes the bladder's capacity smaller. The second thing that I, that I find is after that is that there'll be fascial adhesions and usually like a pelvic tilt. And these things can be uh, worked on with the lower reset, the barefoot sprinter, routine number two, and the partnered fascial release. So the partner maneuvers, you can do the belly button on torque, there's a bladder release in there that you can go to right in our partner release and have those done on you with the ileocecal valve release. Those things with the hydration and the mineralization and then the Power Kirk 30, you should be through that. Usually most people within two weeks, four weeks at the most. 
My intention is to heal my body and help others heal theirs. Yeah, so what is it that you want to do in healing your body? Like with your body that's healed, tell me what you want to do. Because again, if I'm focusing on healing my body, it's hard. If I want to, when my body's healed, I want to climb a mountain, I want to travel, I want to dance again, I want to skylight, because those are the emotional things that you'll be able to, to tap into. Hey Cherry, on the reset again, it's awesome. <clears throat> Love myself and let the rest follow. Yes, loving yourself, and what does that look like? How would you know, this is for Jessa Earth, how would you know that you're loving yourself? What would your daily lo life look like? Like for example, if I'm loving myself, I'd be getting up in the morning at sunrise. This is just me. <clears throat> I would be doing maneuvers with that. I would come back for some integration time, some meditation time, have some cocoa, or we've been doing, um, we've been doing golden milk lately, which is really, really cool. Um, then I would actually reach out, talk to some friends. Um, I would do something I love, which is actually doing something like this. This is what I love, or helping somebody. I'd come back, I'd have a light lunch. See, I would describe my day, because loving myself means that I'm doing certain things. So how would you know that you're loving yourself? That's really important. <clears throat> Living in community and be assistance of the greater good. Hi, Mish. Michelle. Um, yeah, so living in community and being assistant. So one of the things that for me to live in community, <clears throat> um, you know, again, what would that look like? What would I be doing today? In that community, what would I do? The more, the more detail you put down, like if you put a broad statement, I want to live in community and assist others and be a part of the greater good, and then you take the next step and say, what does that look like? What would my day look like? How would I heal? Would I be going to the bay, beach every day? Would I be a community leader? Would I be giving classes to people? These are all ways to get what you want. Really important because right now where we're at and tomorrow, well tonight, 1130, you're gonna start making decisions about how you're gonna do it. How do I heal through years of childhood trauma? Um, 28 day reset, sharing yourself. I mean, listen, we have people that are coming through trauma, including ritual rape, uh, sexual abuse, war torn, um, all that stuff. Childhood, childhood traumas, childhood, uh, like literal stuff. And, and they're doing it through the 28 day reset. They're being in community, doing maneuvers, either online or in person. And they're following the protocols. If you want to heal a trauma, you have to have your body out of stress. Your body will never process a trauma unless, while you're in stress. Hey Gary, what is, like when somebody experiences a trauma, like how does it like get in the body or how does it affect the body, mm -hmm. like right in the, kind of in that moment? You're gonna have to ask me a different way. Okay, I'll ask it later. Okay. Um, staying true to my heart and encouraging my kids to do the same, yes. So, Okay, and this is for uh, Chili Zoli. How would you, what would staying true to your heart look like? If I was watching you, if somebody gave me a video of your day, what would that look like? Describe that video to me. How can I regain circulation to my fingers? Uh, upper reset protocol. So if you're having circulation issues with your fingers, uh, upper reset protocol. Um, but you're going to need circulation is going to require mineral, mineralization. Diatomaceous earth, Irish sea moss, Power Kirk 30, the 28 day reset bundle if you can. Um, and circulation, you do the upper reset with the wrist release and the finger release. You'll get circulation there really quick. But usually if you have constriction circulation and you're doing those movements, then it's going to be dehydration. But dehydration always plays a part in constriction and circulation. If you have blurry eyesight, um, it, again, there's a lot of reasons that could be that, um, or could, could be contributing to that. Start with the upper reset, start with getting your body mineralized. Um, uh, diatomaceous earth, Irish sea moss, upper reset, removes all the fascia in there, because literally a toxic buildup in your fascial layers can cause your eyesight to go blurry, but there's a lot of other reasons. So I would start off with the upper reset, uh, start off with mineralization. 
And you can download our supplement guide. July 11th, UK, yes. Please talk on postmenopause aches and pains. Uh, well, therapy with arts. Uh, we have lots of women in their between 55 and 67 now that have been coming out of menopause. So the question is, should you be in menopause? And what are the aches and pains? The aches and pains aren't the menopause. It's the aches and pains are contributory to the stress which causes you to go into menopause. So um, first thing is, is to go through the 28-day reset um, and it's not post-menopause aches and pains. You have pains, aches and pains in your body. So, and look at that, he even said that too. It's 28-day reset, um, get your body mineralized and hydrated. Um, specifically for women, normally the lower reset, the movements in the lower reset and the hips usually have a massive impact on that. <clears throat> my intention is to help myself so I can help people around me. Okay, so what does help yourself look like? And how would you know that you did it? See, one of the best ways to set a goal or intention is to say, okay, I'll have this intention and, and, how, and how does the rest of the world know I did this and how would I know I did this? Like when I asked a little girl, what do you want to do? What do you want? That I was trying to work that was on the uh, spectrum and couldn't walk properly. She goes, I just want to play tag with my friends. Her parents have been trying to get her fixed for years. And I just asked the question, what do, you, what do you want to do? I want to play tag. When she got it that she was there to learn how to play tag, all of a sudden the healing happened. Her parents had had her in therapy for like four years. Nothing happened. With, with, literally, within two sessions that I worked with her, she's up running and moving around because she wants to play tag. Getting rid of stress in your body, super simple. If you have stress in your body, you can go and do as simple as our 50 minute stress reset, do it twice a day for seven days. That should take out massive amount of stress in your body. The only other reason thing that you would need to do outside of the movements is get your body mineralized. Everything else will work. If you can do things like get the 28 day reset bundle, uh, the power kirk and the other supplements and stuff like that, it will greatly speed it. But the only thing you need to do to help yourself is to get the diatomaceous earth, the Irish sea moss or the minerals, get, his, get the 102 minerals, um, eat good, get this, take the chemicals out of your body and do maneuvers. You do that, everything else will work eventually. Uh, six weeks in cast, broken ankle, screws. Um, go look at the one-footed sprinter. Now, you've already got the surgery, that's okay. One-footed sprint, uh, sprinter with a Liz Frank break, we got them out of, uh, without having to go into surgery. So you start there as a way to look at it. <clears throat> Just follow the, just follow the, and, and since you have it in your foot, the reason why you're getting pains all over your body is do the lower reset and the barefoot foot sprinter routine number two. That's gonna open up around the ankle, the shin, the calves, the hips. That's where you're having the restriction right now. Plantar's fasciitis. Have you reduced the chemicals in your diet? Have you taken minerals, diatomaceous Irish moss? Um, have you done the lower reset and the barefoot sprinter routine number two? If you do those and you, well, first of all, if you were doing all that, it would be almost impossible to have plantar fasciitis for four months. I mean, if it did, you could call me personally and I would work it out with you, but, but go do that. Plantar fasciitis, and this is for Mike, Mikey uh, ROU3. So uh, go do the, Lower reset, the barefoot sprinter routine number two. Uh, get diatomaceous with Irish sea moss. If you could do it, get the Power Kirk 30 and the 28 day reset bundle, all of those are in there. Get those right away. The other thing you can do to speed it up is bath and diatomaceous earth, borax, uh, Epsom salts, a quarter cup of each. Advice on glaucoma. The best advice I can give you on glaucoma right now is to, is to stop why it's happening. Um, the film buildup, that's because, and you'll see this with everybody who's doing fascial maneuvers, they start to have like bright eyes and clear and stuff like that, clear skin. So it's the film in your eyes is no different than everything else that's going on. 
So uh, first thing is mineralization. Diatomaceous reserve, Irish sea moss. Um, do the upper reset protocol. Do that one to two times per day. And, um, and then I would, actually, uh, I would actually go down and do the lower reset um, uh, at least two to three times per week and do, get somebody to do a, a belly button um, partner release and a belly button bladder release because glaucoma and eyes always have some big input right back down there on the bladder. Breathe correctly, Gary. You want to breathe correctly or are you asking me to breathe correctly? If you want to breathe correctly, um, I mean, just do any of the resets. Um, but start off with the upper reset and then do the lower reset, rotate those two, and get the hydration, the mineralization. That's the biggest part. Because if your fascia is constricted, your diaphragm, your ribs don't go out, your diaphragm will stop, to stop working properly, and then you won't get the breathing mechanism in there. And they will start breathing from here. And if you breathe from your chest and shoulders, you're only going to get 25% of your lungs satiated with oxygen. 75% of your lungs requires the, the rib cage to expand, the diaphragm to go down, to pull the lungs down so that the air comes down here. Otherwise, you're only getting a maximum of 25% up there. Why your gut becomes bloated often. <clears throat> okay. The reason why the gut becomes bloated often is that when sometimes it, you'll get this when people say my gut becomes bloated even when I barely eat I only have a bit of fruit it's because you'll have bacteria and viruses that are all through your GI tract and and you have a valve over here that if that valve gets stuck you will become bloated no matter what you eat this is why the lower reset and the uh, psoas release which is really the organ release doing the psoas release two times to three times per day or every time you eat will normally cut, keep you from getting bloated, but it always comes back down to hydration. The reason why things aren't moving properly is there's not enough fluid in the fascia and the organ tissue. And the reason why that happens is because you don't have enough minerals and water holding into those tissues. So start off with our hydration protocol, do the lower reset, uh, and uh, I would also do the barefoot sprinter routine number two because it opens up for all of the things including the stomach meridians. Okay, my right knee turning inside, what should I do? If your right knee is turning inside, you got a hip issue and you got a shoulder issue. So what I would do is I would start with the lower reset and the barefoot sprinter routine number two. I would, if you have somebody, Diana, uh, that, can hurt, that can help you, do the partner maneuver series, starting with the belly button torque, because usually if this is torqued really in here, it causes the body to go in down this, one shoulder to lean in, that causes that knee to go in. Grinding my teeth in my sleep. <clears throat> uh, okay, well, first of all, if you're at the stage where you're grinding your teeth in your sleep, <clears throat> use a night guard. And I know for me, I ground through them like I chewed them up. So what it, there, that means that you have the body masticates in order to relieve tension and stress in the body. So if you're having it constantly, my experience is it's chronic dehydration of fascial tissue and compression in the head and neck. If you're like over the age of 40, you're probably an inch and a half shorter than when you were when you were 28. So <clears throat> do the upper reset protocol um, and hydrate your body, die to make sure it's the Irish sea moss, get the 28 day reset bundle uh, off our website. The upper reset will really help you. Do the upper reset alone. You'll, you'll have a difference the first time you do it. And you do it like an hour before you go to bed. <clears throat> Shoulder impingement with numbness on the thumb. I can tell the people that are here, thank you for coming. I guess you must be new because if you're coming here and asking these questions, you haven't done the resets yet. Um, so just go in uh, with your shoulder impingement and numbness on the thumb. Start with the upper reset and go to partner maneuvers. I mean, okay, you can do everything yourself. You do a partner maneuver. What takes you three months, you can do in one session. So upper reset. Radial nerve pain, which is now causing numbness 
from my cheek to my arm, pit. Can't find relief. Okay, if you're having radial nerve pain uh, in Victoria, BC, um, <clears throat> then I'm gonna suggest a couple things. Number one, my experience is it's chronically dehydrated fascial tissue because the fascia compresses on the nerve. That's what causes that constant pressure. The nerve, can, it gets in basically layers of fascia like baklava. Think about like baklava where you have different layers of, uh, and the nerves go through there and all the fluids go through there. If that crushes, that nerve gets crushed. That's that radiating pain that you start to have. What I would do is the upper reset protocol but you're going to need to get uh, that, that tissue done. You could uh, order from us, we'll send you Power Kirk 28 Day Reset uh, Protocol. Power Kirk 30 will release the infl inflammatory at the intercellular level in your connective tissue. So that's what's holding the nerve. So that releases, you get the diatomaceous earth Irish sea moss um, to, to uh, bring the fluid in there. If you can do the partnered maneuvers, get somebody to do it. And there's lots of people in Victoria uh, or on the island um, if you do the partnered maneuvers, um, that's the fastest way to get that tissue moving. But that tissue there is only part of it. It's right back here. Because if you got a contraction back here, like if someone was to come back and squeeze all the skin on your scapula, you're going to feel it tight here. So you got to get rid of that. And that's why, that's why doing the upper reset protocol will help you. But the partner maneuver series where they go like this and that person's pulling there, that's really gonna open that up really quick. And that usually gives you the relief you want and the side one where you're pulling down. Now, one thing you can do here, if you have radial nerve pain, here's one of the movements. You can take, this is my right arm. Here's my left hand. I'm gonna turn the fascia external. So I'm gonna grab underneath and rotate it around my, fem my humerus. I'm gonna rotate my hand in like this. Put my arm down, pull down, lift up. And then I'm gonna move around like this. Then I'm gonna sit, squat, and I'm gonna keep pulling and stretch out like this. And come up like this. <clears throat> now that's gonna create a little more breathing room in through here and, and all of those. That's one of the, the movements you do. I'll do the other side too. That's not on the upper reset, so we'll go do the upper reset. Left hand, right hand here, turning. Oh, I'm actually a little tight here, too. Down here, pull down, lift the shoulder, flex the hand, move around. You can see me, I'm moving my shoulder, my hip, gives a good stretch. Oh, man. I actually kind of needed that. Thank you. So for my video, Ooh. what um, what are you releasing or what are you working on? What we're doing is we're taking the all of the meridians, the lung meridian, heart meridian, the large intestine meridian, they contract in here, causing a contraction. So when I do this and rotate and pull away and pull the shoulder, I'm getting everything inside to start pulling apart. As that pulls apart inside here and I move my hips around, that gets, that creates, um, that creates, uh, uh, breaks the restrictions in the fascia that's all through here. That allows the lung meridian to open so I can breathe better. Allows the heart meridian to open so I get less restriction through here. Allows the large chest line meridian that goes over up the shoulder and then down the back allows that to open up so I can move my shoulder better. So doing that in conjunction with the upper reset on our website will give you the relief that you want, usually in the chest pack, uh, breathing better, head, neck, shoulder areas. <clears throat> peripheral neuropathy. Uh, yeah, if you have peripheral neuropathy, um, almost 100% certain you're dehydrated in the fascial tissue. Start off with that. Supplements, and depending on where the neuropathy, the, the neuropathy, ah, well, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a, a job release. So take your right hand, if you wanna do it with me, right here. Take your left hand, right hand pointing backwards, left hand forward. I got some tightness, I'm moving my jaw and face around today, I'm twisting to the center. And then I'm gonna move around. Breathe. Uh, 
There it is. <clears throat> yeah, you can see my face changing again. My whole head and neck and face and everything's been changing. And I found a few tight spots here today. <clears throat> that one there, when you walk around afterwards, feel your toes. Your toes are gonna feel a little grippier. <clears throat> what is the best exercise for? Uh, Crohn's DZ SP resection. Uh, <clears throat> any Crohn's colitis, first thing is 28 day reset. You gotta reset the bacteria. You gotta get the hydration in there. Uh, the lesions that are there, the, the Crohn's disease, you cut it out, you didn't get rid of the problem, you just cut up what the problem beat up. So you've gotta reset the environment. So do the 28 day reset, do the lower reset, and the barefoot sprinter routine number two is your dailies, but go and do the whole reset protocol. You gotta get the chemicals out of your diet, you've gotta get the pH in your body changed, and you gotta get your small intestine cleaned up. Self-care, detox, better manage Hashimoto's. You don't manage Hashimoto's. You kick it the crap out of your body. <laughs> yeah, uh, listen, we have, we have people uh, that are reversing their autoimmune symptoms and their disease diagnosis is me by medicine. Go to our YouTube channel again and check it out. Um, check out I Cured My Autoimmune Disease in our podcast. You see Claire done it. You go into our... 28 day reset into our community portal. You'll see lots of people that have done it. I'd say about a third of the people that have been in our Life to Artist program had serious autoimmune disease, um, like serious that are either through it or almost completely through it right now. Somebody asked me to share my stories and struggles. If you want to hear my stories and struggles, honestly, start off and go down, just type uh, Gary Human Garage podcast. Just start listening to podcasts. Literally, my entire journey is there. You can go right from how I was feeling, what I was discovering. You can go podcast on our site, and you can hear every story you can imagine. My entire life and every day of my life has been... Since 2020, every moment, every call, every day of my life has been reported. Because this journey, we, we're showing people, like you, you know, like you see people at the end of a journey and they they have this health or success, and you see them at the end, and you're like, oh yeah, but it's, there's always a, a like, well, really, how did you do it? Well, you guys can actually take the whole journey. When you get into the lifestyle artist program, you can see every call that we've ever had. Every you can see me arguing with people. <laughs> We don't restrict anything. The entire journey is there for you to see. We give you all the good parts when you're learning the 28 day set reset and the life to artists because by the time I'm yelling at somebody, no, just kidding. We gotta get you to like me first before you. Kidding again. That's a good point. Why should somebody uh, join the lifestyle artist program after their 28 day? Well, the 28-day reset is giving you the basic tools, but we're just giving you level one of the tools and the things that you need to do. And if you follow that, you're gonna be great. But you're gonna to come to a part where you're gonna start managing deeper into the chemicals, the lifestyle, and then into the emotions. And it's the emotions at the, at the core of it where if you don't manage your emotions, then the disease is gonna come back. And that's what you're gonna get in the Lifestyle Artist Program. Plus there's a whole community worldwide of everybody from uh, from athletes to moms and dads to students to uh, spiritual uh, coaches and spiritual authors down to medical doctors, chiropractors, everything you can imagine, PTs in that program. Bring the community together and learn about the body in a group. Yeah. Crawley. Where is Crawley? Is that two X's? Is that Crawley, Texas? Is there a Crawley, Texas? It says in Crawley. Crawley, is that North Carolina or Texas? I see Crawley XX. So it looks like two X's. Two X's sounds like Texas. Is that Crawley, Texas? 
We'll walk in trails with poodle. We'll eat more protein and veggies. We'll swim. Good. Build more muscle and be present. <clears throat> Third eye clearance, Carrie. Micro Mission Earth. Growth, what I focus on, the good things in my life, fertility, uh, or fertilize my goals. Do you guys feel a little charged today? I'm sending an extra charge into the, into the ether today. Okay. <clears throat> Let's do a third eye activation. <clears throat> First and foremost, we're gonna do a palate swipe. Take your right thumb, push it up into the top of the roof of the mouth and swipe from right to left. Do it six times. Okay. You may or may not feel some Tension relief in the back of your neck. Now, what I want you to do is hum and match my tone. Mm -hmm. So try and hum that tone. Mm -hmm. Put your tongue at the top of your mouth now and, hum, and, and do that tone. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to imagine the color violet coming all the way through this area in a big ball around your head, doing that tone. Mm -hmm. Now with the color violet, I want you to touch it with three fingers and your thumb like this, right there. Breathe in. Mm -hmm. And you should feel like a vibration going from your to roof of your mouth right to here. So let's do it again. Three fingers and this, tongue in the mouth. So you're vibrating and connecting it right to there. Go. Mm -hmm. Okay, a little bit of stimulation. <clears throat> now, let's do a quick Breathing meditation, okay? So let's do this with me. <clears throat> what I want you to do is put your right hand on your heart, left hand on top, okay? <clears throat> Standing there being calm. What we've done is activate this, but we want to bring it together with all of the other chakra colors. So I want you to breathe in. As you're breathing in, there's, you're going to breathe into your mouth the color that I say, and you're going to breathe it in, and each color is going to be like a layer on top of the other ones. So you're breathing in red first, three times to your mouth. Two. Breathe that red deep in. Three. Breathe into your nose three times. Breathing red. So there's red glow or gas all around you. Now we're going to breathe in orange. So breathe into your mouth and that orange comes through the red. So breathe in. Two. Three. Breathe into your nose. Orange coming through the red into your body. Two, three. <clears throat> Good, now you're gonna breathe in yellow. You're gonna bring yellow through the orange, through the red into your body. Breathe in through your mouth. Again. Let the yellow fill up your whole body. And through your nose, bringing the yellow in. Through 
through the orange, through the red. One more through your nose. <clears throat> okay, now you're gonna breathe green in. The green through the yellow, through the orange, through the red. Breathe it in and bring it right to your hand. Again. Bring that green in through the yellow, orange, and red. Breathe in through your nose. Again. Again. <clears throat> now breathing blue through the green, through the yellow, through the orange, through the red, into your body. Breathe the blue in. Again. I'm breathing mine in stimulating forcefully. Through your nose. Blue in through the green, through the yellow, through the orange, through the red. <clears throat> now for the third eye, connecting to what we did earlier. Purple, through the blue, through the green, through the yellow, through the orange, through the red. That violet purple in. Through the nose. Now we're going to bring white through the violet, through the blue, through the green, through the yellow, through the orange, through the red. Bring it in. Again. The white through it all, all the colors falling you in through your nose. Now imagine white all around you. Push that white out the size of your house, push it out to your whole city, put it out to your whole city, your whole country. Push out to the world. Now breathe it in deep through your mouth. Through the world again. Push it out. Breathe it in. The whole planet. Breathe it in. Push it out. Breathe in through your nose. So push it out. White, white, white. Again, push it out. Again. <coughs> Whoa, okay. okay, open your eyes. Whoa, that's intense. Put down in the comments how you feel, walk around for a little bit. I'm uh, drunk or high, doing it all, all with you increases it. So put down in the comments how you feel. <clears throat> what do you experience it? Like, I don't even know if I can write. Dizzy, dizzy, yeah, dizzy. So let's move around a little bit while you're dizzy. Move your hands, move your head, move your neck. <clears throat> Ideally visceral, dizzy, peace, no thoughts. It's definitely a Gemini thing. <laughs> Thank you, Ruby. Brighter, shaking, <clears throat> refreshed. Feel high. Coming back into my, my body now. <clears throat> Do you feel quieter? Tense more shoulder blades. More in the shoulder blades. Open up your heart. I can hear the sun. <clears throat> I can hear the sun. Da -na -na -na. I can hear the sun, it's all right. Da -da 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 -da. Feel tingling in the back of my neck. It's 
spacey head, tighter behind head, brighter vision, cool, vibrating, vibrant. Foggy brain. Can hear yours. <laughs> okay, let's do our squat. It's squat awareness month. You may not give a squat, but I do. I just just made it up. Tell the others. <laughs> you guys, I want you to squat. Share your video. Challenge three people. Say, I'm squatting and I'm challenging you to squat and do your best and share it. Get this out here. Make America squat again and the rest of the world, the UK, the Netherlands, uh, China, Japan, everywhere else we are. Let's squat. How low can you go? Oh, yeah. So get down the best squat you can. Hold it. See how you feel. Yes. Rock back and forth. Squatting is one of the most powerful things, guys. I when I started squatting in the clinic, I used to squat. I could I could only get down about here. And then when, when I got down, I could only squat. If I squatted for too long, my feet would go numb. I get up, I couldn't breathe, I felt all this pressure, and I just kept doing it and kept doing it and kept doing it. And after about a year of doing it, I could get down like this, I could stay down here for five minutes, and then I started doing things like I'm gonna try to eat down here. And it took me a long time because I didn't have fascial maneuvers. I only had clinical care. I only had chiropractic and body work and massage. It wasn't helping me squat. Fascial maneuvers helped me squat. The lower reset, barefoot sprinter routine number two, the other things is the psoas release, do a couple of times a day, pull over, these will help you squat. Those are in the essential fascia maneuvers. My head comes up. I like to do fascial maneuvers and challenges, but due to meniscus tear, are you not deep squat? Okay, Renata, yeah, you know what? If you have meniscus, meniscus tear, I have professional athletes, including runners that have meniscus tear and have no pain. So what I want you to do is, I do, don't do the squat right now, do the barefoot sprinter routine number two. When it gets you into the squat position, do the best you can, a little bit of a squat. But if you have a meniscus tear, Renata, that means that you have chronic dehydration, diatomaceous earth, Irish sea moss, power Kirk 30, lower reset, barefoot sprinter routine. Uh, do that every day. You're gonna be out of that feeling because you can have a torn meniscus and have no pain in movement. My farmers live so long, <clears throat> plus they're in nature. Since starting 28 day reset, I can squat much deeper. Yeah, essentially Maggie. How do you get a facelift? You go to our website and do the non-surgical facelift. Do the upper reset. There's your facelift. But the, the most powerful way to get a facelift, people want, why are you trying to lift your face? It's because why do you sag? because collagen's not going in there. You notice that even my smile lines, you've seen them come, they go deeper or not, just because this area here is, I had a big extended jaw for a long time. So it's coming back and this area is resetting, but that's also resetting my sacrum back here. So, um, so you'll see my face has been coming, the lines of it coming out, the, the collagen fills. That's why sometimes when you see a video, you see deep, deep lines, because I do work every day on my face. <laughs> hey, spare flex, spare flex. Uh, some people don't give a squat, but you do. <laughs> Good Gemini out there. Yeah, it's funny. If you guys, if, if you're around, you'll see me like, we have a, a square table we eat at. And I'm up on the bench squatting and eating all the time. Yeah, I, I'll squat on the airplane. If you ever see me on an airplane, you'll see me squatting most of the flight. People go, I wouldn't do that. And I'm like, I don't give a squat. Yes, it's possible to heal your meniscus tear. Hey, if the body can repair a, a liver, if you can cut half a liver up, it'll regrow your liver. 
you don't think it's going to be growing meniscus? Of course it will. It's just that people, the reason why we think it doesn't is because people are so dehydrated, dysfunctional, and compressed. They don't know. They never give their body the chance. There you go, Stacy. Thank you for stepping up. I have a tear in my meniscus, and, and she can squat and exercise. Never had surgery. Knee is stronger now. Because, guys, the bones, think of the knee, okay? The, the bones are not structure. If the bones are structure, I'm just going to give you one example. And here's one of the things that I do with science. As I go, I take one thing that science cannot explain, and then I, and I drive down it, and I say, listen, you don't have to believe me, but use your science to prove this. Okay, so how does the knee hold itself apart? Because if it touches, I tear my meniscus, and I'm in pain. So how does that knee stay apart? Well, it's not the muscles. Only one muscle crosses the knee. It's about this thick. There's no way that's holding up your body. It's the tendons. Tendons keep you from pulling out too far so you don't dislocate. So it's not the tendons. It's not the muscles. Okay, what's left over? Cartilage. What is cartilage? Connective tissue. So it's my connective tissue. What is connective tissue? Fascia. Yes. It's your fascia that holds your knee apart. Fascia is the structure. Thank you, Stacy. Cellulite on buttocks. Yeah. So this is one of the biggest ones. Uh, hold on a second. I'm going to grab something for you. They, they stopped me from doing pictures on Instagram and sharing videos and stuff with you guys. So, so I have to do it another way. So I'm going to share something here with you. And I'm going to show you why you get what you call cellulite and this is uh, okay i have again women crossfit athletes have a complete six pack very low fat and they still have cellulite on the hips and on the on the thighs usually usually it's on the thighs the buttocks are right around here okay so this is an x-ray of a pelvis right okay so in an x-ray, you're only supposed to see the bone. So what is all this stuff here? What do you think it is? And furthermore, guess what? You can see these are at different levels. These are layers. So what, what is that? That's called calcification of your fascia. Now, imagine that your fascia is all these different layers, and you've got a layer that's calcified right here. A layer is calcified right here. Guess what it's going to do? It's going to pull like this, and it's going to look like wrinkly under the skin. There's going to be a point. It's all going to pull to there. Guess what that's going to look like? Cellulite. Yes. What you think is cellulite is calcification and chemicals that are trapped in layers of your fascia. Um, even like Mary, who is, uh, uh, works out a lot, and she had... And she, she's a fit bodybuilder, or sorry, fit CrossFit, Muay Thai fighter. She works out a lot, and she had what she thought was cellulite in here. And what we did is we got her hydrated, we moved the fascia through the maneuvers, and then all the cellulite went away. I don't even believe in fat. Like, we believe in fat. I mean, I recognize that there is brown and white tissue, but what is that tissue? Where does it come from? Why is it there? I just don't have the same belief anymore. What about scoliosis, right? Lower back, lumbar, thoughts on carnivore diet. Uh, okay, I'm not gonna, whatever diet you wanna do, you do that diet, okay? Uh, I recommend that you change your diet. If you change your workout and you get more rest sometimes so you can be better, and every other aspect of your, of your life requires contrast. If you drink two glasses of wine a, a, a day and you don't get drunk, and now you, you stop for four days and then you drink it again, you feel light again, your body requires contrast to work. When your body's working, you're happy. So anytime you change your diet, doesn't matter what you change it to, your body is going to start working. It's going to feel good. So this whole bullshit about, 
I'm going to go on this diet because I went on this diet. I feel good. The question is, why did you feel bad eating in the first place? It makes no sense. If you feel bad eating, fix that. Then decide where you want to eat. So what about, um, so anyways, what was the question? Oh, scoliosis. Okay, so here is a scoliosis. And this is two months of the 28 day reset following the supplement protocol and the chemical cleaning protocol. Really great example. Did it by herself. Okay, let me show you. Uh, let me show you th three hours. And you guys, you can DM us or you can go back uh, around August, early August, and you can look at me. I did a one hour. I took a scoliosis and dramatically shifted it in one hour. And <clears throat> and I did it live. Here's a before, here's an after. This is before, this is after, for those of you guys who are asking. I want you to notice the heart here. I want you to notice the heart here. What do you notice different? You notice this is all black and this is white? Remember when I was talking earlier about calcification? What do you think that is? That's calcification the fascia when you do fascial maneuvers you break it up guess what happens right here okay oops so this 27 degree scoliosis this is this partnered assisted now look at this you're not supposed to be able to see fascia on an x-ray well what is that what is that and just happens to go right along the scoliosis shoulder line, right? <clears throat> yes, most people, if you, uh, if, if you hydrate your body, you decompress it, you clean up your nutrition, you manage your emotions, you do the fascia maneuvers uh, all by yourself, usually within, you know, sometime around a year, you can get rid of most of the scoliosis effect, probably 80% of it within the first six months and probably 60% of it within the first three months. It gets slower as you go along. If you engage in partnered fascia maneuvers, it'll happen super fast. So I would do partnered fascia maneuvers if I had a scoliosis. I would do the 28 day reset. I would get the chemicals out of my diet. I'd engage, make sure my body is hydrated through mineralization. I would do the partner maneuvers one time per week. Osteoporosis. This. Well, the fascial maneuvers won't necessarily heal osteoporosis, but they will help you heal why it happened. So osteoporosis, what we have found is that it's, a, it's an imbalance in minerals in your body. And so the way that you, you get more absorption of calcium in your bones is you get the reason why it's not, which is absorption issues. And without having diatomaceous shirts, people who have osteoporosis and osteopenia, who do the 28-day um, reset, follow supplement protocol, um, and take the, the supplements that we recommend and do fascial maneuvers. Usually they come out of diagnosis, almost always come out of diagnosis within six months, but most of them within three months, they notice a, a, a substantial change. You guys, you're being poisoned, plain and simple. And you got it, and because you're being poisoned, there's certain things you need to take. I don't care how good you live your life. If you're not taking diatomaceous earth and you're not taking uh, exogenous minerals like Irish sea moss, you need all 102. So even if you got shilajit, it's great, but you got to get the rest of them. Irish sea moss is the best one. I love shilajit, by the way. I'm not downgrading shilajit. I love taking shilajit, the resin. I like putting it in just. Uh, hot water and drinking like a tea. I love it. But diatomaceous earth, you need 102 of the, you need 102 of the minerals. And, and with the diatomaceous earth, um, you're going to get 90, 94 of the 102. And then you can use bladder rack, rack, um, bladder rack to get the rest of them. Burdock root helps as well. But if you put those in, you're getting all of them. People go, oh, I don't want to take supplements. Well, I just want to eat my food. Your food no longer has the minerals in it. That's the issue. You got to get the minerals.
minerals out of your, you got to get minerals in your body and you can't get minerals right now out of food that's been highly farmed unless you're growing your food and even then like you know like on vancouver island where we live a lot of the islands don't have selenium in um in the soil complex like they're literally deficient in selenium so you can't even get that it's an element how long can you do high amounts of mass times um, i mean you can do it for a long time, but it's, it's not going to hurt you, but I, I don't think it, there's a need to do it more than the 28 days. And then you drop down to the um, maintenance dose with uh, bio-optimizers. Use the masszymes, the probiotics, and HCL. Uh, they have a digestive pack. Use that. It works really, really good. Um, and then you can do it again. But what you may want to do, uh, which we haven't talked about, is you may want to take and do a high dose of the probiotics for like 10, 10 days straight. And what I mean by high dose, and again, if you're not, if you haven't already done the 28 day reset, don't try it. But if you've done the 28 day reset and you want to double down on it, um, you know, take 10 to 15 um, P3OM and take those per day and take it every day for like 10 to 15 days and see what happens. Um, Wait. Lightheart and his team have tested a thousand of them consumed a day. You cannot overconsume them. Double scoliosis, 94 and a half year young mother. <clears throat> Severe, anything you can do. Uh, for your mother, Julie, uh, Julie CE2, um, you can do the partner maneuvers on her really lightly. I would do the belly button on torque, the ileocecal valve release, and I would do the light ones. So if she, if she, I don't know what her mobility is. If she's lying down, you can pull on the arms and have her pull back. That will give her a lot of relief, the part of her maneuvers. No events in Mexico coming up, but we will be announcing all the tour dates in the United States. It's either April 20th or 27th. We're still working on venue in Los Angeles area. We're still in between Orange County and Malibu. Uh, 18th in um, uh, May 18th in uh, Austin, um, first week, uh, second, third, and fourth um, in New York, 22nd in, uh, of June, uh, that's 73rd of June, so 22nd of June in Prague. Um, I, I look for some dates in, uh, look for some dates in Germany, uh, Netherlands. I was planning a whole summer and then I realized I have to be back here in August. I'm back in Canada. It's my daughter's birthday. Or sorry, wedding. <clears> hey, <throat> okay. please don't go. No dot or dash. No dot or or dash. <clears throat> Do we, we not? What's your name? Uh, my name's Aiden. Aiden? Hi, yes. Aiden. Where are you? I'm in Oklahoma. Oklahoma, right, right on. Are you a Virgo? <laughs> no, I. Uh, I actually. It's so funny. I started listening to your astro astrology. Uh, Thing from last week and it spooked me so i looked at my vedic chart and i'm actually a gemini oh what's your what's your tropical chart uh, oh i don't That's know i i mean yeah, i just I, saw it an hour ago yeah. <laughs> so, so you overthink everything oh uh, one million hey, percent uh, hold up your hand let me see your fingers okay so oh so yeah what do you know what your moon is and your rising uh rising is Taurus, my moon is Gemini, my sun is Sagittarius. Oh, you're oh Sagittarius, sun. You're Sagittarius. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you're Sagittarius. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. So yeah, because uh, your moon in Taurus, Taurus, your hands are we're definitely not Gemini. Okay. Gemini's have, yeah. have longer fingers generally, generally. But Sagittarius, I could buy. Do you have a Do you have a longer torso, shorter legs? Well, that's also the thing. I 
was assigned female at birth, so I'm actually transgender. So I'm the average size of a U.S. woman, five five. So I I really feel I'm stocky. I have more of my dad's build on a woman's body. So sorry. So you're transgender. Which do you went from female to? Well, I'm non-binary. I don't have a gender identity, yeah, yeah, but fair, I went fair, to fair, more fair masculine enough. presenting. Yeah. Do you, Do you mind talking about it? Is it okay? Oh yeah. No, I'm very okay. open about it. I mean, um, so you went, so you, so you went from female to male. Yeah, essentially. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, uh, con surgery, constructive, no. or just just hormones. Okay. And and uh, mastectomy or no, I don't have plan to have any surgeries. Okay. okay. No, thank goodness for not having surgeries. I just don't believe in surgeries, man. It's like they are the worst. Yeah, I finally accepted that myself. It's not going to make me better or happier person. And, you know, because like, I've, I've been, I've been worried. I mean, um, look at, uh, do you know Patrick Manuel, the professional fighter, US, uh, the boxer? <clears throat> I feel like I've heard the name, but I'm not into that kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, sure. Uh, what, what, when, well, he was when she was she. She was a uh, you know Olympic uh, Olympic boxer, um, professional boxer, five times um, national champion, all that. Anyways, we took um, uh, Pat Manuel. Is he uh, was the first professional transgender boxer? Because because you have to. One of the things is you actually have to test for hormones. In professional. Yeah, boxers. that's what I think I've heard of them. <laughs> yeah, actually, if you go to our YouTube. And you go back to the old videos from the garage, you'll see um, first transgender professional fighter. And, awesome. and what we did is we, it was for me, it was a, it was a real experiment because I, 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 didn't, I didn't have any experience working with somebody who'd gone through the process. Mm -hmm. So, and legitimately, like, this is one of those issues where I'm like, this is a male body. Like, like I can, I, I can touch and feel the difference. And I said, this is legitimately a male body. It doesn't feel like a female body. Yeah. And, and when you look at Pat, you would feel that, like you feel that in every sense. And, and this is the way, this is where I believe that there's, I feel differently than I am. And so I, I move to the way that I want to move. I, I have a, I have a high, uh, degree of respect for being authentic and whatever that is. The thing that I'm, the thing that I've been concerned about is the surgeries, especially with the kids, because because uh, now we're un unraveling them. We have people that decide had surgery and now they have to undo it. Yeah. What was your decision to not do it? Um, if I was ever going to have surgery, it was only going to be top surgery. I've always been very comfortable downstairs. It was just my chest I was uncomfortable with, and then. Uh, three years ago, I just had a horrible time with my medications. I was off of them trying to find a new one. So I was very depressed. I admitted myself to the hospital twice in a year. And then I had this just kind of a spiritual awakening in that time to where I just realized my gender isn't even important. It's fake. It's made up. And I just kind of really went above the whole humdrum of being human to where I'm above it to where now I see I kind of planned this. This all I was supposed to be transgender, not as a struggle, but to learn something. Okay, and that's just where I'm at. It, where it's not, and surgery is not going to fix. There's nothing to fix. That's yeah. the, That's the part. Yeah, I mean that. I 100 I agree. It's like it's like people say I'm sick, and I'm like, or I'm broken. I'm like, you're not broken. You're not. You sick. identify as that. You're, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, people identify all the time as I have. I have a disease, or I'm broken, or I'm stupid, or I'm ugly, or I'm good looking, or I'm successful. But those things, any identification eventually will come to some sort of crisis. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. And so in your journey uh, through it, um, did you have ups and downs with your, with your, your, because uh, you went through the hormonal journey. Did you have ups and downs in your belief? Did you question yourself through it? Uh, every person that, and I can say this for all of us, every person that starts to do actually do hormones and begins to see the physical changes in the body, yes, we all go, oh, this is incorrect, I shouldn't have done this, oh, this is wrong, because it is a huge change we can't undo. But then once you get past that, you sit with it and accept it, then I was like, okay, no, this is what I wanted. That's what I wanted, that's why I did this. And ever since then, I always knew, whatever comes, this is what I asked for, this is what I expected, this is what I wanted. So I've never had any unwavering faith that this was right. Not that there's anything right or wrong to do, but this is what I came here to do and I'm doing it. I always get what I want, what I've said, even though I'm not a very outgoing person. So no, I was 
I was very gung ho. I know I always knew I'm not a girl. I'm not a boy. And that was the struggle is getting other people to understand that. So I don't even fight it. I just like this, like, sure. I'm male to female or, or female to yeah, male. It just I'm, makes I'm sense more, to say that I, if you I, don't know the a, language. There's definitely like from a medical side where I'm dealing, uh, I'm not anymore, but there's definitely a, a conversation I have to have. I mean, about that, but yeah, but that's, that doesn't determine somebody that determines the machine. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. And, and so I, this is like, cause one of the, I'll tell you one of the contemplations that we had, cause we were, you know, we, we were dealing with professional athletes, Olympic athletes, all this stuff. And we're like, okay, so this is a fighter. I mean, it's, it's, it's a female becoming a male. Is this something that we support? Because then the question was fighting. Do we support a male who becomes a female? And, and this is, this is like my first shot at it, at trying to even think about this because I didn't even have this in my head in 2018. Yeah. And it really brought up a lot of, a lot of stuff because inside of us, we have a masculine and feminine side. And, and yeah. really at the end of it, we're in the age of Aquarius where masculine and feminine are starting to merge. And that's why this whole movement is happening right now. It's because of the age of Aquarius. Because we're supposed to, we're supposed to not identify. We're supposed to be in community. We're supposed to be yes. fluid in some nature. That's the age of, that's what human beings are in the age of Aquarius. Now in the age of Pisces, we were black or white. And that's an astrological thing. And we're, mm -hmm. we're now in the age of Aquarius and we're having all these things where it's also, it's, it's the internal decisions. Like, how do I feel? Mm -hmm. So do you, do you think differently now? I love when people ask me that. Yes. Oh my gosh. I did this all with a therapist. I the same therapist over the eight years I've been on testosterone. I've seen her nine years and she can attest that I think differently. Uh, it's just when people started actually seeing me differently, they saw they treated me differently i had no choice but to think differently because i was not treated the same whatsoever anymore and people started not seeing me as feminine good good point social reinforcement yeah so yeah part of the way that i act is socially informed yeah i mean yeah no I the first time i saw a woman afraid of me in a parking lot i was like oh god i'm a man yeah if i hang around with a bunch of guys who identify as a male and act as a male and all day long or the opposite as act as a female or act as, or a female eventually over time my characteristics my mannerisms and stuff like that change it and my mannerisms again shape the way that i even physically look over time yeah yes 100 percent. you know because we're having an interesting thing and in, in, like i look at it from a, i look at this from a very there's a practical aspect like i look at the actual shape of bodies mm -hmm you know, and mechanics of bodies and how they flow. And so I'm seeing a lot of young women that today, if you go back, I was a bodybuilder in the 80s, 70s yeah. and 80s. So, and I went national, so like big guy. Mm -hmm. And I now see women who are infertile who, because they're packing on muscles around, around here, not able to conceive because of that. And like in LA where I was living, the, when you go into a gym in LA, because in LA you see the extremities of things, mm -hmm. the women look all buff and, and strong, and the guys are very thin and, let's say, metrosexual. Uh, they're very thin <laughs> and lean and stuff like that. Yeah. And, and you can actually see that as a culture shift. And, and a lot of that has to do with hormones, mm -hmm. but our hormones are affected by things like chemicals in our lives and our diet. Mm -hmm. So, Question for you. Yes. Um, does your aspirations in life change? Like what you want out of your life? Does that change now that you've been in this transition process? Uh, honestly, I never planned to live past 18. I was incredibly suicidal. Almost, I, was, I had high marks in high school, graduated with honors, but I almost didn't graduate because I was going to fail English. Uh, so I didn't have any plans whatsoever. I was going to go join the Air Force, but that took too long because of the hospital stay I had to do. So I quit that, and I've just been winging it ever since and transitioning at the same time. And now, since the I, I found my guru, all I want to do is just live for my guru, and that's my aspiration is uh, liberation. So now I'm a Kanma yogi. 
yogi, which I never thought I'd ever do. I thought I was against spirituality and all that. And now I know, oh, that's the only path I was here for. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I think it's, you know, this is, um, so part of my journey, um, like I'm not, I'm not changing the way I present my sexuality or anything like that, but I, I'll tell you, my journey is, is, has been one where I have changed radically inside. I, I was this hard, tough, uh, driving masculine energy guy who started working a lot with women over the years, but the natural trade. And then as I started to evolve, my consciousness, I started softening, becoming more open to my feminine side. You know, how does that show up in my life? Well, my relationships change. Mm -hmm. um, people treat me differently. Um, I still sound masculine. I still sound, but I have a lot of feminine energy that I work with, which allows me to literally, which allows me, I believe, to relate to a lot of people because oh, I, can, I can talk to both sides pretty easily. Oh, by the way, you want to see fun? When I do women's health videos, oh, no, just look at the comments there. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure. I already see on here. Here, yeah, it's mainly women saying, and you're all just first to say, "Here's what's going to help," and I love that. That's why I'm here because I'm so interested. I'm trans, and I've transformed my body in a way that no one's talking about. And I want to know how can fashion maneuvers help my kind of body. So, uh, first of all, when is your actual birthday? Uh, uh, December eighteenth, ninety four. Oh. Jeepers, you're a, um, you're, you're 27, 26 or 27 or 28 degree, uh, in the way I read I, I read tropical. I tell people, whatever you can do, uh, Vedic's all right, tropical's all right. Mixing them together gets confusing. So Vedic yeah. has, has way more relationship stuff. Tropical's way more like diagnostic. So I, I know tropical. So basically, you and I are not too far apart. I'm December 20th. Oh, nice. So um, that makes you, I think, uh, in tropical, that makes you most likely either a Capricorn or Aries. I think it's Aries. I it think I call Aries, a lot of Aries in yeah. the report. Yeah, so it's, uh, you see patterns and you see <sighs> patterns and, and all throughout everything in the world. Oh, yeah. Uh, my, cal my therapist says I'm very calculative. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, it also can make you a little fiery. Oh, a little. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, so I'll speak to my experience and, and as a Sagittarius like you, I'll speak to my experience is that for me, I have a lot of fire and I'm a 29 degree. So I have, I have, I have Sagittarius, Virgo, Cancer at, in, my, in my sun sign at master level. But then I'm a Capricorn, Aries, um, and then I've got a good balancing of other things. But... So for me, what fascial maneuvers, the greatest thing that they did for me was, and I believe that this is for you, Sagittarius are highly affected in the stomach, mm -hmm. uh, highly affected in belief and worry, mm -hmm. shame, <laughs> guilt, and fear. Yeah. I read for yeah, health. Because, because your job is to push through those. And as you push through those, you share the way with others. It's yeah. like you feel <laughs> it's way your out job again. to learn and share with others through your experience right yes that's what i really want to do is basically become you but as me <laughs> yeah. and i guess i'm becoming you as me <laughs> yeah amen love that so uh so and by the way like my physical attributes like the way i touching me i feel more like a female than i do a male today I yeah I believe that yeah hundred percent I uh, yes like soft, percent this year. softer um, softer textures uh, I, I like when somebody touches me I feel more like a baby to tell you the truth but but yeah. I, would, I would identify the feeling is more feminine and and that's been interesting because that's been a shift in my perception which had then shifted my hormonal array and then which shifted the way I react to the world which then shifted the physical aspects of my body. So mm -hmm. um, what they did for me specifically is, is there's all these spikes of fire that are trying to get out. And those, 
Spikes of fire created a constant elevation of stress in my body, which causes hormone dysregulation, stress, anxiety, depression, stuff like that. Yeah. So what fascial maneuvers did for me was they, and, and what goes along with that body is usually aches and pains and shoulders and neck and lower back and, and sometimes legs, mm -hmm. um, like right, right deep in the legs and right down to the bone. So with taking the stress out with fascial maneuvers, it did a couple of things. It allowed my body to not have stress spikes. Over time, not having those stress, stress spikes meant that I had more of my access to my conscious awareness because stress takes us out of consciousness and focuses us. Yes, amen. Okay, and then the other part too is um, the physical aspects of doing that over time is my body navigated to its peak. Like I don't work out. I, mm -hmm. I look like I work out, but my body I mean, yeah. gradually navigated to what its optimum performance was, which was I'm at my 14 year old body weight. Love. Yeah, and, and I actually more like, because I was a bit, I'm more, I look, look like, like a, I look like a teenage boy in the, the shape of my body now. So that's my normal body weight. And with that, I move better. I have more confidence because I move better. I like to move. Sagittarius is like mm. to move. Um, mm -hmm. I, have, I have less stress over time. I digest better. I have more clarity of thought. Those are all things, especially for Sagittarius, because it takes the fire out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A yeah. bunch of energy. I feel it's just wasted every day because I, I can't channel it. It's so explosive. What do you do for work or do you work? Yeah, I'm... I'm uh, a material handler in a warehouse. That's what I've been doing for the past five years. I'm, uh, it's my kind of work because it is constant hustle bustle, but I'm so burnt out at it. I'm, I have a new, for my first warehouse job took four years. I got burnt out. Second one, it took a year and this one has been four months and I just had a major panic attack. I had to leave early. They almost called an ambulance for me. So like, that's where yeah, I'm okay, at. That's, okay, that's, that's, that's what it should take out. Hey, listen, uh, um, DM me after this. I'm going to send you some supplements that are going to help. Um, okay, if you're work. okay with that. Yeah, I just got my, I was opening up my vitamins today, actually. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, I'll send you some of ours. Uh, they will help everything from the hormonal to the, like, the panic attacks come usually because of dehydration of fascial tissue. And when you're going yeah. through hormone therapy, uh, the body uses a lot more water and dehydration becomes very prevalent. And the way you notice it, it's like restriction in movement. Like, I... Achiest soreness, that's one of the first signs. Uh, yeah, I have a chronic pain of seven every day. I just wear it very yeah, well. Okay, yeah, so that'll help you get out of there and it'll give you some space. Start off with um, feel your body around. You like to experience. Um, so <clears throat> there's on our website, there's an upper reset and there's a lower reset. <clears throat> yeah. And there's a barefoot sprinter routine number two. Those, the combination of upper reset. Barefoot sprinter routine number two mm -hmm. on one day, lower reset, barefoot sprinter routine number uh, two on another day. Mm -hmm. Within about five to seven days, about 50% of your aches and pains from movement should go away, actually. Okay. It's just, I, I've been into you and doing this stuff off and on for like a year. I just can't get the discipline to commit to keep doing it because I know this is the only thing that's going to work is sure. me working and doing uh, it. Or, sir, where'd you say you lived again? It was. Yeah, I'm in Oklahoma City. Oklahoma City. I think in the, in the one thing is then then do this. Do the 28 day reset. There's online classes that happen <laughs> that's every day. So much commitment to me. That's what's hard. Even the one day reset, it's that's so much commitment to me. I'm that low in my executive functioning. Yeah. Okay. So here's what you do. <clears throat> Take one fashion maneuver you like, like any gravity. Totally into totally twisted. Okay. That's my favorite. Do it. Just commit to do it three times a day. Okay. That's There's reasonable. Nothing else. Nothing else. And I'll send you some supplements. Usually the usually the commitment um, function is going along with dehydration and hormonal imbalances. And it's like yeah. when you have serotonin uptake, and that's also depression. Mm -hmm. When the serotonin comes up in your body, um, you see the connection. It's a little easier connections to the world. It's a little easier to grab onto. But if you've been through HRT like you have been, um, at the level you have been, it's going to mess with those balances. So it's to bring your yeah. body back into those balances. Okay. 
because that's what I'm really uh, con been concerned about is I did the HRT to be more socially accepted so where people wouldn't misgender me, but now I know I never wanted to do it because I didn't want to put this poison in my body really in the first place. So now you I'm know, like, I, what do I do? You know, it, I, I think you're part of a new generation, honestly. I think you're spearheading an idea where people can get there without the hormones. Like, like I'm yeah. showing people that, that I'm becoming softer and more feminine in my demeanor, mm -hmm. um, but I'm doing that, that through, um, I'll, through getting, because what do hormones do? They, when I take a hormone exogenously, it sends balances of hormones inside of me, but it's telling my body to release. It's mm -hmm. like when I eat food. I mean, my body has the capability of doing that. It just needs to be in the right condition to do it. So mm -hmm. I've been, I, you know, I've, and I've done, but I've done HRT to like bioidentical hormones. I've done, um, you know, I did steroids when I was, when I was younger, a bodybuilder. <clears throat> I've done growth hormone for, <clears throat> for years at a time. The end result of it is anything I give my body that my body can produce itself eventually causes a dysfunction on my body. Yeah. And our supplements, the reason why they work so well is the, the primary, the fascial flow and the foundation, all they're doing is giving you the elements and minerals that you're supposed to get from food. You can't get from food anymore. Exactly. Amen. And yeah, I and would love the other to one is the power Kirk uh, 30. What that does is it, at the cellular level, it releases the fascial tissue, the inflammation, so that your body can move easier, and then the movement takes over. Movement is your cure, but if your body's in pain when it moves, it takes longer to make that happen. Yeah, amen. I, I've been so scared to move because I'm in pain, but when I finally do, I feel so much better. I, sense. I, I, okay, I'll, I'll send out the, so just DM say I'm on the, I was on the live with, with Gary. Okay. Um, ask for Gail specifically. Say, um, I was told to ask for Gail. I'm going to send you out some supplements that are going to help you get moving a bit better, help your hydration gets up. And I think you'll find that the discipline that you're looking for will come there. Take the one fashion maneuver, just focus on one. And if you okay. get bored of that one, then take the anti-gravity and just focus on that one and do it three times a day. Okay. Because it's like you get up out of a chair, and you've been sitting for a while, you naturally want to stretch. So, so mm -hmm. that's the only thing you have to commit to is just stretching your body in one way a couple times a day. And over time, what happens is it's a reward mechanism in your nervous system. Because what happens is that drops your stress down without, like when we do a yoga pose or we do something like that, it stresses up mm -hmm. and then we, we drop down. Right. This doesn't do that. This just drops it down. So it gives it a natural reward of oxytocin, serotonin, dopamine. And as soon as that happens, you do that over and over again. It's like Pavlov's dogs. You get trained and your body goes, I want that. So now I'm yeah. doing one. Now my body wants to do it. Now it wants another one. That's an excellent point. I love that. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, we just work with our biology. Our biology is, is <laughs> it's programmable. And if we know mm -hmm. the programming code, which is, is reward, consistency, um, and if we have reward and consistency, then the body habituates. Yeah, ab absolutely. That's awesome. I'm, you know, I'm, it's been a real pleasure talking to you today. Absolutely. Thank you for Thank being you so, so open and generous and with your information. I, I completely, completely respect your journey. I respect the way you're doing it. That's the important part. And you're not angry about it. You're just doing it because that's what's right for you. And that's the if it's right for you, do it. And it's the it's the yeah. angry. It's like I say this about because people I'm, I eat plant based. I'm not a vegan because it's same same vegan, vegans are same. vegans are generally angry. I mean I yeah. I work with thousands of them, but I am mm -hmm. plant based. Mm -hmm. We have one thing in common: we eat plants. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so it's really really great talking to you. Um, look forward to uh, checking in with you at some point and seeing how your journey's going. Yeah, me too. Thank you. This is so random. I just decided to do it. I'm so glad I did. Thank you so much for your help, Gary. Absolutely. Looking forward. I'm going to meet you at some point. I I can guarantee you. Oh, I look forward to it. Thank you so much, my friend. Namaste. Namaste. <clears throat> that was interesting. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, I want to see how, how this journey goes. What do you, you identify as? That's a good one. So I love
love it when people talk to me about their health because they identify. Well, I'm broken. I'm tired. I'm sick. I identify my Hashimoto's, my cancer, my ADHD. So do you guys still do that? Do you still identify with your diseases? Yeah, it was a good conversation. Thank you so much for coming up. I am really looking forward to having a second or a third conversation. You're, like, there's a few people, like Pat Manuel. If you go to our YouTube and look at, uh, or you can go in, in YouTube, you can go Human Garage Transgender Boxer, <clears throat> Professional Fighter, and you'll get the video. You'll see, Pat is one, uh, he's a grandmaster, 29 degree cancer, by the way. And <clears throat> he's one of the nicest human beings, one of the most practical human beings you ever, ever, ever will meet. And those, I have, those are my primary experiences. The rest of them haven't been that great because people are doing it for the wrong reason. And what I like about, uh, about Chris is that he, uh, doing it for the right reason, just like Pat Manuel. Actually, if you haven't done it, go watch the video. It's on our YouTube. Uh, you just type in Human Garage Transgender Professional Fighter or go to our website, send our, our podcast. It's right back at the beginning or our videos. Go back to the early ones in the clinic days. I encourage you to go do it. <laughs> Stay safe. Identify as a woman. <laughs> I am creation. <clears throat> uh, uh, from winter fascist school in Italy. Oh, you're in a fascist school? Is there really a fascist school? <clears throat> Is there really a school about fascia? My gosh, I didn't get on the, where is this? I wonder if that is, or if that's just winter fascia school being in winter. Uh, uh, generalize this human individual. <laughs> Hello, Fran. Oh, hey, Gary. Is it Fran? Is it Fran Philip? Hello. Oh, oh, we've got a really bad connection. No. Oh. It sounds okay right. to me. Is it I, Fran? Is that your name? Yes, it is. And oh, you're and uh, are you from? Where are you from originally? Um, originally Australian, but live in San Francisco now. Oh, and so yeah, because you didn't. You sounded there was an accent there. I got to <laughs> Australian. I got Aussies all around me here. You do have Aussies all around you, exactly. I got a bunch of you Aussies we're working with too. Working with a. Okay. Uh, a product company, also the famous Aussie chef is coming uh, coming on board with us right Oh, that's now. awesome. Yeah. That's fantastic. So are you, in a, you, are you in a fascia school, you said? It's called Winter Fascia School. It's uh, run by the University of Padua. It's got um, Dr. Carla Stecco. She's running the school with a number of colleagues where they present all their research that they're doing on fascia, and it happens once a year. And so this is that week when they actually present to the... To the community there's about 50 people from all over the world that are here they didn't invite me yeah no you, you gotta know you just gotta I, I, apply to it I, honestly i get invited i get invited to these things all the time i don't go to any because so that's the thing. i don't identify i don't i don't identify like i stopped my journey of learning about fascia I, I, I had to take a, I had to, I had to pick a thing I, i'd say okay i can keep learning about what's inside the computer or i can just learn how to operate it better and that, so that's what christopher and i do we yeah. we we get we, the apply, the we apply the research to the human body rather than just knowing the statistics and the facts well i think uh, do you guys actually are you practitioners too yes. or yes we're absolutely uh, practitioners. Um, i think you'd be really surprised to touch my body most practitioners get a little freaked out when they touch it the first time yeah no well we both do hands-on fascia manipulation so we do lots of different styles and and i have to tell you i've been teaching fascial maneuvers the ones that i do know constantly because people are changing so i've got to do the 28 re 28 d 28 day restart with you i know i have to do that and i would love to come and learn from you it's just that life's a bit busy at the moment yeah i mean you have your time um but yeah, yeah the the idea is think about it this way fascial maneuvers is a philosophy of movement and it yes. technically is a language so there the language is constructed by 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 10 basic movements and those 10 basic movements have an impact on all 10 of your organs which is emotional sense
So really what I'm doing is I'm building a language to communicate with our bodies and our entropic field, which our fascia is immediate. So you would love all the new research that's been coming out and how they're talking about the, the new stuff that they're discovering and how to apply it. A lot of them, a lot of the people here are academics. And so there's a few of us that are outliers that actually are people that do the hands-on and stuff. And so it's, we take the dry stuff and try to make it into reality. And that's why I love Human Garage, because you take all of the academia and create um, change. So we're walking through the town right now. Forgive me, Gary. We're going back. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, like for me today, I can dislocate every one of my joints. I've gained three inches in height. Um, my, uh, you can't feel cartilage. I've reduced my muscle content in my body down to my 14-year-old uh, uh, muscle I know, content. I've been watching your transformation. Yeah. I've been watching it over the last two years. I'm like, oh my God, the change is, the, the, what I see from you is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it's just drawing a pathway. It's it's to it's to give your work more context. Really, it's because there is a lot of academic talk, and you know, with the academic talk, I just kept getting in arguments with people, and I'm like, okay, I know you say that, but I can take this scoliosis and I can completely change it. I can liquefy all the fascia in your body by touching and holding somewhere for 90 seconds, make your whole body feel like liquid without touching it. So it was it was more this this boundary of uh, we, uh, where, like for example, how many layers of fascia are there? And I kept getting infinite, and I didn't realize that actually fascia starts out here in our field, and part of it we can see, which is a human body. Yeah. So the energetically, it starts from way out here, right? And then as you come yeah. in, you're getting close to the actual foundation of the the structure, right? Yeah. Yeah. Or. Or just like a human has a tailbone, we're the tailbone for the energy. <laughs> yeah. I know. I'm going to leave. I'm sorry. It's so noisy, Gary. But it's lovely to talk to you, and I'll keep you up yeah, there. Maybe I'll call you later. Forward to hear you. Forward. We'll see you soon. Thank you. Thank friend. you. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye. Right. Look at that. Fascia. They didn't invite me. Actually, they probably did. <laughs> yeah, if you're into the science of fascia, don't invite me. <laughs> why because why do i just want to argue with academics they argue and they tell me all the things that i can't do and i just like well explain this <laughs> that's the funny part okay uh, <clears throat> hello melissa oh. hi so uh lmt let me think uh licensed massage oh, therapist I it was, let me think <laughs> where uh, where where are you, Melissa? I'm in Michigan. Oh, we're about to Michigan. Like the southeast area. Southeast. I don't know southeast. What would that be? Uh, um, Detroit. Um, oh, Detroit. It would be considered like downriver. I'm further than Detroit, yeah. so I'm in between Ohio and Detroit. Wow, there's a lot of work and bodies down there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you're you're getting a lot of the uh, fentanyl um, fentanyl pandemic uh, down there, right? Through that area. Yes. Yep. My sister just opened up a wellness center um, in August, so we have the Kungan water, and so that's alkaline ionized water. Yep. And then we have like the sa the infrared sauna stuff like that, um, PEMF cool. mats. So I've been really trying to, to utilize her space because I work out of it. So sure, that's you, been helpful. If you get down to, uh, if you ever get down to Dayton, Ohio, go into no. Body Garage uh -huh. and uh, look at their setup. They have they have the best wellness setup with all of the equipment that I that I know of in that area. Uh -huh. yeah. Cool. They trained with yeah. me actually. So. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. So when's your birthday? I I'm June 29th, 1992. Oh, are you, do you know your degree? Are you like a seven degree cancer? Um, I am an eight degree, so I'm actually a sun and moon in cancer. Yeah. Uh, my sun is eight degree, my moon is zero. Oh, my rising, my rising is a Scorpio. Oh, I, can't lie to you. I, I, um, I actually just had my 
part, my chart kind of like depleted apart a little bit, like to my knowledge, like because some of the words and stuff and looking up things doesn't help. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I have learned, um, well, I know this intuitionally, I know this already, but I guess it was a validation that I'm very emotional. Yeah. And there's just really like nothing. Rem- I it just flat out, I'm just emotional person. And that uh, how old is she described. I'm 20 or I'm 30, 31, 31. Yeah. Yeah. So that's changing for you. It's you're learning the ranges. You're a grandmaster in emotions in Capricorn, Mm -hmm. which is basically you're becoming an emotional teacher in community and your Scorpio gives you this sixth sense so that you know how to draw boundaries with people and communities, which means that you had a lot of your boundaries violated over the last 30 years. Yes. Correct. Yes. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. So, and I, and I do feel that I've been following you for probably two years now. Um, I've gotten as far as the 14 day. I, w- I did seven, then I did up to 14. Now I'm working my way to the 28 day reset. I'm so excited to keep going. I do have diatomaceous earth. Um, I need to be more consistent with it, but um, I'd like just more knowledge or maybe I can go online. You don't have to explain to me today, but just like more about the Power Kirk. Is it Power Kirk 30? Yeah. Tell you what, I- I'm going to send you okay. some because uh, you're helping sure. people. So send me a DM afterwards. I'll send you some. You can test it and try it out. Um, you can actually, right now, we've just launched a new supplement guide. Okay. And you can go download, download the supplement guide. It'll link you to areas of like research and stuff like that. So basically, here, here's, here's what it is in a nutshell is curcumin by itself there's different ways to look at inflammation Mm -hmm. um one way is oxygen reactive uh my brain's not working out orac rating so the o-r-a-c rating um is an inflammatory way but it's not it's not the be all to end all it's just one way of looking at it because it just tells you inflammation doesn't tell you where or what but Normal curcumin is 9,500, the best curcumin you can get, like Thor Nutraceutical. Um, ours is 500,000, so 9,500 oh, wow. to 500,000. But it's, it's specific because what it is is ours is, um, is actually a new type of pharmacology. It's where we take and get the active ingredient like pharmacology does. They find something that works in nature like aspirin is white willow bark, and they put it into a into a, into a petroleum base. Mm-hmm. So you get the benefit of the white willow bark, which is everything calms down, but you have your stomach bleed as an example of aspirin. So what we do is we take the third curcuminoid, which targets literally the connective tissue. Okay. And then, and it goes in, or in the cell of the connective tissue called, uh, and turns the heat shock protein called MSK1. And so that turns off the intercellular inflammation. So all of your connective tissue, which is covering every nerve, gland, tendon, organ, everything, all of a sudden mm-hmm. relaxes. Okay. And it does it within about 35 minutes. You, there's no possible way, even our ORAC rating doesn't describe how powerful it is. So then it blocks another thing, which may be too much science for people, but it's called NF kappa B, which is a marker that's, that's part of every disease pathology like cancer, any inflammatory disease. So we can't say that it cures cancer, but we can say that it takes out these elements that are involved in all of these diseases. Yes. So, it's, so what we did as a, as a therapy shop originally, because we started testing it in 2016, mm-hmm. is we had a two hour treatment cycle. Um, and it was, our treatment was very much like a combination between rolfing with structural integration, with some fascial work that we were developing. It was like pretty painful. Okay. And like seven out of 10 pain for the whole time that they're there two hours. Like some people would go, I love the work, I can't deal with the pain. And, but it worked. It, worked. it got people up partially moving and stuff like this. But we would give them two power Kirk before they entered, uh, before they got treatment, when they came into the reception. And that, two hour window immediately dropped to 90 minutes and then down to 70 minutes within six weeks. Wow. So in other words, yeah, because the, the, a lot of times when you're working with somebody as a, uh, in massage yeah. or body work, you have to get them out of stress. Yes. yes. And like ground myself constantly because 
I don't want to bring everybody's energy into my own self plus my house. So, but yeah, that is. Now, do you drink alkaline, the alkaline ionized water? I do. You do? And with your Kangen, you want to make sure that you clean it. Because yes. the hydrogen that's produced out of the Kangen, um, the cathode gets a little bit of calcium yeah. in it and, it, and it stops producing hydrogen. It'll still produce alkaline. So you want to make sure you keep it clean. Okay. Um, and they have a solution in there to clean it. Um, as uh, They have a mineralization solution. And then a vitamin C solution, I think it is, yeah. to clean it. Yep. Yeah, just yep. we do have that. overdo the cleaning. Okay. The, yeah, now the Kangen, the Kangen has like a cleaning cycle after so many times it's being used, it'll clean itself. But we do clean, we make sure we clean, I think every two weeks because we have people coming in and using this. Yeah. Clients. Yeah. I mean, here's another place that you can go at with a wellness center. If I was investing in technology uh, uh, as huh? a wellness center, I would buy the Nano V. Um, it's expensive. Like it's $14,000. But... What it does is it uh, intranasal. It okay. puts the same thing as ionized water into your bloodstream. It's a fourth phase of water. So it puts a smaller water droplet and it literally takes out oxidative stress. It cleans up the mess from oxidative stress and free radicals. There's not a device on the planet that I know that has as much impact um, and cleans body. So it hydrates your fascia within, within minutes of using it. So like, for example, um, what I, again, clinically, um, we would put it on the body. We'd have them sit 15 minutes before treatment. Mm -hmm. And we'd have them sit on the Nano V. And then that treatment came down an extra 15 minutes faster because the hydration and the fascia. But what it does do is it stops protein folding issues. So it stops issues with brain, so brain fog, fatigue, uh, heart, heart congestion, autoimmune, stuff like that. Okay. And again, it's super, super powerful. If you can get those, you can get it off our website. You can go there and you can talk to them. It's worth it. Okay. Can you say it again so I can write it down? Uh, Nano V. Nano so V. Go to, our, go to our website and go under partners. Uh, okay. We're going to drop it in the comments right now. Under partners okay. and under, um, uh, sorry, under products and partners. And then you'll find ING3 Nano V machine. And we, we describe it. Like I said, it's something that you can finance for a center. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I honestly, I feel a calling to do. I, I heard of this thing called an AO scanner, and it they're good. They're good. Are, they're good. They're good. Yeah. Yeah. That, but here, here's the problem with the scanner. Like, I don't mm -hmm. use diagnostic technology anymore because at uh -huh. the end of it, it's going to tell me to do something. If we give the body minerals, we right. take down inflammation, and we reduce the stress twice per day. There is the body will do all the rest. Right. And so these, the problem that I have with scanners is not what it, because it's AO scanning is very accurate, by the way. Okay. It's that people say, well, I'm down, I'm deficient in vitamin B, so I'm going to take more vitamin B. And that's not, that doesn't fix it. It causes the problem to get worse mm -hmm. because I'm not answering why I'm deficient in it. Right. Yeah. So, right. They, so that's, that's why I'm not scanning because I don't promote a scanner or we don't work with any because I have access to every one. And, but I yeah. have, I've used them all. And AO is okay. a good scanner. If, you, if you're if you looking for diet, where I think it finds benefits, um, again, it's the same treatment at the end, even if you had parasites or whatever. Okay. Uh, mineralize the body, hydrate yep. it, mm -hmm. take out the inflammation and stress, clean up the GI tract, and move the body. Everything else fixes itself. You have a greater ability to help people than any doctor because you know how to move the body. Mm -hmm. And that's where the body heals itself it's through movement yes yep. yep yeah and then i just have one more question this goes back to the natal chart i was told by the woman who read it she said that i'm a stellium in cancer yeah. and a stellium in capricorn yes. now does that just mean like i like have to figure out my soul's mission through those two signs yeah, or I, mean, I, need, I look at the rest of your chart to look at it but one of the ways to understand yourself, because again, those all are words that don't mean anything. It's like a scan. Okay. It, it doesn't really mean anything. It's yeah. like, what are you going to do with it? Right. So if you go to, if you want to try it out, go to, go to our, uh, that same place where mm -hmm. our partners are. Uh, okay. Website, try Serious Joy, the astrology app. Give it a shot. It's only four bucks for the first month, and you can cancel after a month okay. if you really don't want it. Yeah. And, and it will tell you daily 
about your astrology. It will tell you about you, why you're here, your A story, your B story. It'll give you a forecast. It'll send you seven messages a day in the United States by text. And, and so in other words, what you want to know is what does that mean? What does that mean is emotionally, um, you're becoming a teacher, a spiritual teacher of emotions. I think so. That's what I and, feel. And the Capricorn is that, is that spiritual teacher. And the cancer is all the emotions in community. Mm -hmm. And at the, at the core of it, what's, what, the way you learn, it's like, it's like driving a car at night. It's like you bump into a car, oh, I got to go over there, bump into one, yeah. bump into another one. And when you, when you look at astrology like that, you go, okay, you get a message, oh, I don't have to bump that car because I know it's over there, so I'm going to go straight. Okay. So it just gives you better ways to adapt. And I think because you're a zero degree uh, means you're a grandmaster in your emotions. So I don't know the rest of your chart. Does do you have your chart there? Uh, I do. Um... When you scan down there, are there any other numbers? Actually, just read, read it. Read it off to me, though. I'll, I'll tell you some more. Like, what is your your Mercury and your Venus and your Jupiter? Oh, look at that. She froze. <laughs> okay, I guess that wasn't yeah. supposed to tell. Okay, got it. Oh. What's your Mercury? Um, I am a um, Leo in Mercury, three degree. Okay, so, uh, so basically your thoughts are all about education, uh, about learning, being the student, the teacher, and it's about believing what your heart wants. So you're, you're, you're always thinking, do I believe my heart? How do I support my heart what about your yeah. venus um 12 degree cancer oh 12 is is what you love what you feel and it's three one plus two is three so that's sagittarius again cancer so your relationships are all about belief your relationships all about belief like for you belief is a major issue and and you have to believe in things and you and your so your relationships cancer is about caregiving so you're a teacher, a student and a teacher, highly, highly dosed in belief in every, in every relationship. And relationships aren't only with people, they're with things and ideas. Like you care for ideas. So right. what? Yeah. So what is your Jupiter? Jupiter, a nine degree Virgo. Wow. Actually, you're a lot like me. That's a Jupiter. That's that's Aries, Virgo. Virgos are wounded healers, always trying to fix stuff. They learn, they embody stuff. Nine is Aries. Aries is leadership and action. So you open up to ideas and things and concepts where there's action and leadership, where you can fix, resolve, or embody things. Yeah, yeah, that's totally okay, me. What about yeah. Saturn? Saturn's gonna be interesting. Okay. So, uh. Um, 17 degree Aquarius. Oh, so you're a grandmaster Aquarius in Saturn. So your Saturn is, Saturn is eight, which is Capricorn. That's what, okay. that's what part it is. So basically your karma, you feel karma like in your brain, your muscles and your bones. Like karma for you is like you feel it right to your bones. And yeah. Aquarius is about equality, fairness. It's about technology, uh, community. So again, so your karma comes through and your karma comes and is taught to you spiritually through community and the things where you learn it is like fairness and equality and um and community and vibing with things so so those are the issues that you would have had you know like in your first 30 years you would have been tested in all those you know fairness equality community vibing with people yeah maybe not vibing with people yeah absolutely Absolutely. Yep. Okay. So for sure, that sounds we're getting interesting. So, uh, so after after Saturn, you've got um, your you got your um, Uranus. Now, I mean, not Uranus, but the planet. Yeah. So uh, my next are both Cap Capricorn. Okay. Capricorn. What degree? Uh, Sixteen, and then Neptune is seventeen. Oh, so you're a uh, Pisces Capricorn in communities, which Pisces is spiritual, Capricorn's a teacher, and your intuition is Pisces Capricorn. So your intuition, 
again, you feel it in your bones and, um, and your feet, actually, technically. But your, so your intuition, you're going to feel it here and in your feet and in your bones. It's and funny again, you say here. Yeah. <laughs> I feel a lot here. A lot of times I can hold things up to here and I feel the feeling that I can describe it as being tickled from the inside. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, like, yeah, basically like your inside is meeting your outside. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. So what's your, uh, what's your Pluto? Pluto is a tw 20 degree Scorpio. Uh, let's see, look at this. You are, you're wired to do what you're doing. 20 degree is cancer. That's a grandmaster cancer scale. That's protect what you feel. And Scorpio is Pluto. It's boundaries. It's the other mm -hmm. side. So like quite often in your life, you would just stop something or start something and there's no logic to explain why you did it. You just yeah. knew that's the right thing. And people, you know, in, in this world, they want to, yeah, but does it fit all these boxes? And you're like, I'm just doing this. Yeah. Which yeah. I can tell you what. A lot just, of your boundaries are tested in family. Yeah. For in family, for sure. I have had to set quite a few boundaries in family, but, um, back to like, I don't know, just really quick for when I wanted to become what I am currently, this is a career to me, licensed massage therapist. I went to a, just like a, a college campus just to sit there and sit through it. I got up in the middle of it. I couldn't do it. I left. Yeah. I just, I, yeah. I couldn't do it. And then once I found the school for just massage only, I felt very like more empowered. I felt better. I felt like me, like I was following an intuition. So I've actually been massaging for um, going on 14 years this year. Oh, that's a long time. So what about your um, what about your Chiron? Um, I am eight degree Leo. Oh, Capricorn Leo. <laughs> so so uh, you are definitely become a teacher of the heart. <clears throat> you're you're wired to. To, to be a, a, teach, a student and a teacher and a community leader in caregiving. Mm -hmm. So yeah. here, you know, one of the things, by the way, in our Fundamentals of Fascia, our partner release series, we have a bunch of table things that you can do as a massage therapist, by the way. Okay. Um, go check, check that out. Yeah, I, I, I think um, you're, you're being called into action, basically. So, like, yeah. you're being stimulated to do something new and, and – you might find that you might find that you're being pulled in new directions. Okay. So you have that sense. Go with that sense. Don't use logic and rules. Okay. That's the best thing for you. Okay. Thank you so much, Gary. I appreciate it. Really nice meeting you. And, uh, and uh, check in with me again and let me know how it's going. Okay. Thank you so much. Okay. Thank you. Namaste. Okay, everybody. <clears throat> That was an interesting day. Wow, that was super cool. Um, a couple of things coming up. If you're in New York, uh, we have class tonight. New York, if you know somebody in New York, call them, get out to the class, it's on our events list. Um, if you haven't done it yet, go to our YouTube, please sign up and subscribe. Yeah, hit our follow and subscribe, it helps us. If you haven't done it yet, join our latest 28 day reset. Next one starts on uh, I think the next one you can get into maybe February 15th. It might be the February 20th. Oh, it would be February 29th. Um, or sorry, the 1st, uh, March 1st. So you, you have to get in now to get ready for the next Global Reset. Uh, um, we have Astro Monday coming up in two hours with Chris Ritecki, and we're going to go over what's coming up for the week. Want to talk about the parents group? Uh, yeah, if you haven't done it yet and you have a child and you're working with them and you want to help them out, we have a parents group that was piloted for um, basically for the last year. Parents helping, you see these videos that we put out and these, uh, these uh, photographs before and after and testimonials. It's all from the parents group. Um, we still have some time that you can sign up to be on the beta. Um, and you can go to the link in our bio and you can sign up. When that program goes full scale, it's probably the biggest program that we've that we've ever done. Uh, so it's parents helping children, and we have parents with kids with cancer on the spectrum, kids with uh, like significant disease pathologies, all getting better. And if you can do it with a kid who has 
cancer, brain cancer, and they can get better, or they have, uh, they're on a spectrum and they can come off the spectrum, then what would it do for your kids? So uh, go sign it up, just go to the link in our bio, sign it up, we have a couple more days that you can get in. We're gonna close it off for a bit, lock the trial, and then we're gonna get really used to the Circle platform. If you haven't done it yet, go to the Circle platform, and register. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great day.